Hey y'all, and welcome back to Bourbon and Bones. If you are a new subscriber to the show, welcome, and if you're a faithful viewer, welcome back. So tonight we're actually going to look at a military exclusive bottle, and that is Jack Daniels Bottled and Bond. So this is exclusively released to bases across America, and a good friend of mine, Mason, uh, is in the U.S. Air Force, and he grabbed this for us, and so a big thank you to him for his service and for his willingness to smuggle this out of base for us. Let's dive into the history um, of the most sold whiskey in America. So Jasper Newton, or Jack Daniels, was born in the 1850s-ish, 1850-ish, or not at all. Uh, there's a lot of unknown about that. The distillery celebrates Jack's birthday in September, uh, and, says, and at his tombstone it says he was born in 1950. Uh, but being a poor boy and a youngest uh, child of 10, records are spotty at best. Jack's father died during the Civil War, and he hit the road at a young age. Uh, Jack was taken in by Dan Call, a minister and bootlegger and slave owner. Uh, Call's master distiller has, was a slave named Nathaniel Green, or Uncle Nearest. Uh, we've done a full episode on Uncle Nearest and his uh, contribution to, to Tennessee whiskey, to, to whiskey in general in America. Um, definitely want you to check that one out. It's really cool. So Uncle Nearest continued to work for Call after emancipation and until Jack won an inheritance battle for his father's estate in 1875 and took over Call's distillery when Call quit distilling for religious reasons. Then in 1884, he opened the current distillery in a hollow in Lynchburg, Tennessee. And in 1897, he began using the square bottles that he's so famous for and adapted the old number seven. So Jack never married or had children and had plenty of nieces and nephews um, who took over the distillery after his death in 1911 at 61 years of age from blood poisoning. Now the story has it he was angry at his safe because he had yet again forgotten the combination. And he kicked it and he broke his toe and that led to blood poisoning and eventually death. Now that is somewhat of a famous lore, it's not very confirmed, but I think it's one of the best stories, so that's the one I'm going to stick with. Jack Daniels had to close during Prohibition, but restarted in a still very dry county in 1933, and then forced Tennessee's hand to repeal the state-mandated moratorium on alcohol in 1938. So Jack Daniels has been in bottle and bond for decades. And after dropping the proof point, they released the new bond, bottle and bond edition periodically. Uh, and now, most recently, with this version. Now, for a Tennessee whiskey uh, to be given that title, it must first be a bourbon. Then, the way Jack uses it, uh, he is the famous mellowing process that is now called the Lincoln County process that he learned from Uncle Nearest. The process is where they take the white dog and pass it through 10 feet of finely crushed charred maple charcoal, then store it in a brand new charred white oak barrel for the duration of its life. Uh, so currently there are no barrels older than seven years old, and this is coming from the master distiller, Chris Felcher. And I find this personally very, very interesting because a lot of distilleries have 15, 18, 20 year old barrels floating around for a whole variety of things for blending, for special one-offs, that kind of thing. Um, but Jack Daniels tends to run a younger uh, distillery. Let's finally dig into the bottle. So on the very front here, Jack Daniels, 100 proof, Tennessee bourbon, uh, sour mash, bottled in bond. Made in Lynchburg, Tennessee, charcoal mellowed. Um, really, actually, really really pretty picture on the side. It tells a whole lot about uh, the distillery and a little bit of its history. And on the side it just talks about in the 1890s, Mr. Jack Daniels, trust of whiskey and his unbroken seal being bottled in bond. Uh, and his rich, bold whiskey honors that spirit. And I, I will have to say, for full disclosure, I don't like Jack Daniels. I don't like their rye. I don't like their whiskey. And 
I'm going to be honest with you up front about that. I'm not a fan of Jack. And if you are, I don't think you're wrong. I just personally don't like it. <laughs> and I'm sure there's a lot of whiskeys that I enjoy that you're probably not going to like. But I am going to give it a fully fair shake, but I need that disclaimer out there. Oh, also, this is a liter bottle. Kind of an odd one to be producing at, but sometimes those little special things are kind of important. So, for the smell. A lot of cherry, very, very chemically cherry smell. Definitely get some of that charcoal uh, and a little bit of that maple. Um, I don't, know if, I don't know if that's really quite psychosomatic because I know it's filtered through it, but I kind of I do kind of smell some of that. So on the palate, cherry. There's lots of cherry notes. It has a slight metallic kind of go. I always called it kind of the tin foil. Um, it does have a good caramel note in it though that kind of runs through and a little almost into a, like a caramely butterscotchy kind of flavor. Uh, it's very, it's kind of delicate on the palate. It's a little spicy at a hundred proof. Um, might be still a little right at the four year mark and has a little bit of that youthfulness to it. That gives it a little bit more backbone than the standard Jack Daniels for sure. And the finish is nice. The finish actually has a, um, a very warming right along the outside edges of almost a, a cocoa kind of chocolatiness. Uh, still has plenty of that um, tinfoil cherry all the way through, but it has a nice little edge to it for sure. So as always, we're gonna take a quick little break. I'm gonna add some water, kind of see how this, uh, how it, the blossom bouquets. Apparently it's a fancier term for that. And uh, so stay with us. Welcome back. Trying uh, Jack Daniels Bottle and Bond with a little bit of water. So on the nose, a little bit of water really kind of softens a lot of the cherry. It's definitely there, but actually almost turns into a darker cherry note. And a little bit of like a toffiness or um, divinity kind of sweet... Uh, not quite chalky, but like that, that more powdery kind of sweetness kind of comes wafting forward. So on the palate, you really can start tasting a little bit of that more of that kind of sour mashedness behind it. And I know that most bourbons are sour mash, and I know that, but. Um, it, it's a it's a definitely a, a stronger corn presence, and I think some of the filtration has kind of like in kind of married into that. So it has this earthy, smoky cornness to it. The cherry's still there, and definitely has that that little bit of that going along it. And the butterscotch has really kind of shifted almost into a honey, which I think is. And nice, it's pleasant. The finish now is a lot more of that tinfoil and cherry sharpness, but a little bit more vanilla actually kind of starts kind of coming through with it. So tonight for the verdict, if you like Jack Daniels and collecting everything they produce, this is definitely something you want in your collection. It, it is normal Jack Daniels, kind of cranked up to 11, where like I feel like a lot, of, a lot more people would be interested in it. I think a lot more people would like to try Jack at 100 proof. Uh, for me, personally, 
I'm never gonna buy it. Like I, this was a gift from a, a very good friend and I'm very happy he did this for us and he's excited to see the show, but I'm just not a fan of Jack and I don't really enjoy it. Uh, but I can taste the fact it has great quality behind it. Like there's even parts of it that I even enjoyed about it, but that cherry tin foil just won't leave me alone. <laughs> I can't, I can't break away from it. So if you like Jack, definitely go for it. If you don't like Jack, um, give it to someone who does. Like this will be appreciated by a Jack fan every single time. So for our final transition tonight, we're going to look at one of my favorite stories about dinosaurs. So this is the one of the most recognizable dinosaurs in the world. It's the Stegosaurus. And Stegosaurus means roof lizard, a herbivore, four-legged dinosaur from the late Cretaceous. Sorry, late Jurassic. 150 million years. Don't worry about that. Uh, Jurassic. It was in the Jurassic. Actual Jurassic Park kind of stuff. So this dinosaur lived 155 to 150 million years ago. First described in the upper uh, Morrison Formation in, in the western part of the United States. And there are only three recognized species from this dinosaur. And only 80 specimens have ever been discovered. First described during the Great Bone Wars by Nathaniel Charles Marsh and what is now the Dinosaur Ridge National Park. So stegos are known for their large plates on their back and of course, the large spikes at the end of their tail. And we're gonna be focusing more on the spikes featured here. Tail spikes for stegs are called thagomizers and were not named by scientists at all. The name actually came from Gary Larson, the creator of the Far Side cartoons. This one here is where it comes from. It says, now this inn is called the Thagomizer after the late Thad Simmons. Now this seems like a really odd way for a dinosaur to get a portion of its body named. It's particularly such a popular and well-known dinosaur even by the time that Mr. Larson actually wrote this cartoon. But they were just called tail spikes before that. Uh, and the name just kind of stuck. Paleontologists were like, sure, Thagomizer, that's cool. Let's do that. <laughs> and it was eventually adopted by paleontology as, as it's in all the official literature about Stegosaurus. And I personally think it's one of the most amazing and fun stories of how a dinosaur or part of a dinosaur got its name. Well, after finding the story about the Thagomizer and the story of Jack Daniels, tell me what you think about both in the comments below. And remember to like, share, and subscribe us. And of course, always remember, share a bourbon with someone. Good night.